Ladies and gentlemen, please make your way to your seats. The show is about to begin. Hey there, Littermates. Welcome back to Boss Kitty Live. I am your host, Boss Kitty. How is everybody today? Happy Monday. Oh my gosh, you guys, my brain, whew, it's not doing so well tonight, so bear with me. Um, I hope everybody's had a wonderful weekend and that you're ready to start the week with us. Um, Oregon is supposed to get snow tomorrow. I did Portland, specifically Salem, kind of. I don't understand, but I'll take it. Sure, whatever. What? Why? Why? Why is it doing it again? I know. I don't know why it does it, though. I just hit the button. But I just hit the reset open. No, I hit it when we first when I first started the show. We're trying to fix it. Sorry, guys. I don't know why it keeps turning on. It's weird. Anyway, hi. Welcome back to Boss Kitty Live. We're going to have a great show, even if things are a hot mess in here. <laughs> you just got home from work. Emily, fantastic. Hello, Allison. How are you? Uh, hi, Tina. It's good to see you. No show, please. I got stuff to do tomorrow. Allison, hold on one second. No snow, please. You've got stuff to do tomorrow. Fair enough. Fair enough. You got your bag? Fantastic. So yes, just so people are aware, if you're a patron, grab bags are available right now. We've gone ahead and sent that link out to our patrons. Only they have 48 hours to grab those. I will let you know that they are probably going to go before they go to anybody else. We probably won't have any on Wednesday. We had 26 total to hand out. And at this time we have, let me see how many are left right now. We're at 15 left currently, so they're they're going fast. Um, Auntie PK, I hope you're doing so well. I'm doing great craft, thank you for asking. You just want enough snow to postpone your four-year-old kidney ultra. That's fair, That's you don't want enough snow. I get it, I get it, that's fair. I have to go get my braces uh, adjusted tomorrow morning, so. But it's right up the street, I'm not too worried about the snow. 
TK, on the other hand, has to drive all the way to Portland, pick my dad up, go to Newburgh, and take him to a doctor's appointment, take him back to Portland, and come back out to Salem. So I'm really hoping that there isn't snow. Anyway, welcome to the show. If you've never been here before, we're so thrilled to have you with us Thank for the first for time. We do a little um, sh uh, game called We Look at Do Some Goofing Ups, and we do that every half an hour on the half hour. So the first one will be at... 6.45, which is in a little less than 10 minutes. So make sure you chat it up with us because as an example, we had somebody who just um, purchased, Brittany Michelle, who just purchased her grab bag. We have a person who just purchased their grab bag, was able to use their free shipping code that they got last week, that they won last week when they chatted it up with us. So those really do come into play for sure. So if you want to play and we'll do some give them ups, all you have to do is be a subscriber. It's really easy to push the little button and then chat up with, chat up with us. Hello, little brat. How are you, Matt? Hello, hello. It'll be your first BK yarn. That's really exciting. I love grab bags because so many people finally take the plunge on BK yarn just to check it out. And while they might be one of a kind bags where it's not necessarily yarn that we give, give away or that we sell on, a, on the reg, right? You get an idea of what Boss Kitty yarn's like and people, they, they love those grab bags. So it just makes me so excited. <laughs> you got yours. I won't tell anybody, JK. <laughs> hello, Marie. Hi, Rosie. Oh, you guys are so great. Okay, so it is in fact a make along Monday, which means we will be working on our sweater. However, I have a dear friend of mine that I used to do, um, ooh, I'm going backwards, it's really funny, the Rocky Horror Picture Show with, and she found in her, you guys are gonna get a little story, she found in her attic this beautiful heirloom um, afghan that her grandmother who's passed uh, made or started to make and didn't quite finish. She didn't quite finish the border on it and she doesn't crochet but she's desperate to figure out how to how to finish it and they don't have any extra yarn so what I recommended is because it's really already so big and it was just that last row I said just take out the the half of the last row she's already done and bind it off there and then go ahead and weave your ends in. She's not sure how to do any of that so because I'm a solid friend and because I figure there's people here who want to know how to do that, we are actually going to do a real quick tutorial first, um, which means I need to do a row or two of crochet. Um, and we're going to show people how to frog your crochet real quickly, how hard it is to, uh, to end your crochet, right? And then weaving in an end. So it should take us maybe 10 or 15 minutes. It shouldn't take us too long. And then we'll get right to our sweater. You just picked up one of the grab bags. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. Sometimes you get kitty glitter and it's like second Christmas. Uh, most of these are going to be kitty glitter, just so people are aware. If if you're like, I've never had any BK yarn, you're gonna get a lot of kitty glitter. Just just so you y'all y'all know up of up up front, there's a lot of kitty glitter going into those. Oh, okay. That's fantastic. Yeah, and you can definitely still sign up as a patron on any level. $5, $10, $25. I think it's $5. Yeah. Um, it doesn't matter what level you sign up on. You can sign up to be a patron right now and still get a grab bag as long as they're still available. Okay, so I got my chain. We're going to go ahead and just... We're going to go back and forth a few rows just so I've got something to work with here. And then... And then I'll uh, I'll show I'll, I'll show the things that I need to show off, which is how to frog it real quickly, or frog a row, and then um, how to how to bind it off and everything. This so I'm trying desperately to use this frills hook that I have, right, the metal one. But even this one, like I have such a hard time with it trying to catch my yarn. But for this tutorial, we're definitely going to try it, see if I can make it work. And I'm using it's it's an it's a worsted weight yarn. It's, um, what is this? Oh, it's the Impeccable. So this is the Michaels brand yarn. Um, and I'm using it specifically because it's the only worsted weight I really have in the house right now. And also because it's a light color. And so it makes seeing stitches for, t for tutorials easier. If you ever decide to do any type of fiber arts tutorial, even if it's like knitting or crochet, whatever it is, knitting, crochet, whatever, I recommend using a neutral tone or a light color make sure it's solid um, and make sure it's not super dark because that way people can see your stitches much easier um, it doesn't get confusing they can see exactly what it is you're trying to do i just split the stupid yarn because it's this this is not my favorite yarn if you can't tell <laughs> seven grab bags left 
Holy moly, only seven, you guys. I told you they go fast. You weren't going to buy a grab bag and then poof, you must have slipped right on that knit and craft. <laughs> I slipped on the pay button. Ruh -roh. Uh Those grab bags, by the way, my loves, those will go out at the end of this week, just so you're all aware. I just want to make sure. You're not going to have them in two days. It's going to be at the end of this week that they go out. So you'll either have them at the end of this week or the beginning of next week. Has strict instructions in the event of my untimely demise to box up my unused kitty, boss kitty yarn and send it to BK for giveaways. <gasps> that's the most beautiful thing I've ever heard, yarn pirate. Oh, that's so wonderful. Thank you. I'll make sure they go to good people. <laughs> BK bursted. <laughs> I love it, Matt. That would be a great uh, great name for... Hursted weight would be great for our worsted weight yarn. It used to be called Fat Cat. Five left, you guys. That's it. Just five. When I told you they go fast, I mean... Normally, they last a little longer than this, so I'm pretty impressed right now. But... Lasting more than 48 hours is not a thing that happens with, with the grab bags, usually. I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't just pulling your eyes' chain on that one. So how was everybody's weekend? Last Wednesday, I asked you all to do something exciting and outside of your comfort zone, right? Treat yourself to something. And then I wanted to hear all about it on Monday. And I bet you thought I'd forget and I totally didn't. So uh, it's time. Tell me all about it. Also, you guys have two minutes until our first round of Wheel of Goodies and Goof em Up. So make sure that you uh, hit that subscribe button and that you chat it up with us because we want you to win. BK and TK, how are the kitties doing? Marie, they're doing really well. We had people over yesterday, and so my brother was kind of a jerk. <laughs> Joe, if you're watching this, you were kind of a jerk. He had this little drone that he was using, and it made these really loud noises. And I'm pretty sure it freaked Zuzu out. She just kind of hid in the other room. Um, and she's a little skittish this morning, too. My phone is blowing up, and I can only imagine that those are... Um, those are Shopify notices. That's that's the shop telling us that they're selling, selling, selling. <laughs> I got a bag too. This is actually my first time getting BK yarn. I would just stare lovingly at the pictures for a while. Can't wait to try. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. You were gonna so I ordered a bag. <laughs> Speaking of, Allison, I will be swinging by next weekend with a yummy wholesale order for you and the shop. So I'll be there. I don't know what day. Um, it'll, either, it'll probably be Saturday, honestly. I just don't know when during Saturday. My friend's birthday weekend is all weekend, so I'll be in Portland anyway. But I wanted to make sure you guys had it before the chaos weekend of Rose City Yarn Crawl. And also, you know, because. Okay, so we've got a few rows here. This is really all I need. I don't need a lot here. Um, but it's 6.45, so we'll come back to this here in a second. First, it is time for... I don't know why I feel like I have to do jazz hands with that, but whatever. Okay, so it's Wheel of Goodies and Goof'em Ups, my loves. We're going to go ahead and pick our very first contestant. Oh my god, we only have one bag left. That was fast. Maybe I'll scrounge around and see if I can find more, but I don't think I can. <laughs> oh my gosh. You guys, those, if we, wow, this will be a record, depending on how fast that one sells. Virginia, just so you're aware, TK has refunded your shipping and handling on the, your order because you couldn't get your Hazel's Heroes code to work. So just know that we've got your back. Uh, <laughs> um, let's see here. Little brat, let me make sure you're not on the list already. I know, I already mentioned that. You are not, so congratulations to Lil Brat. You are our first contestant on the Wheel of Goodies and goof -em ups This is so exciting. Okay, so let me get back here. And let's get back to that wheel. Ba, 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 ba. There it is. Hello, wheel. How are you doing today? Okay, so you guys know what's on this wheel. There's a lot of stuff on here, but we'll just go over it real fast for you. We've got blinky rolls. We've got Ravelry patterns for up to $5 and $10. And please make sure that you... Um, Make sure that you stick to those numbers, right? By the way, just so you're aware, all of the grab bags have sold out. That is in record time, 17 minutes. We have sold out on those grab bags. That's amazing. You guys are so intense. I love it. 
Okay, so we've got dad jokes, we've got adject animal sounds, we've got yarn tarot, we've got free shipping, both international and domestic, and now we know how those work. Uh, we've got do, 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 game over on there, merch codes for stickers and buttons, and we also have, uh, yarn, I think I, said, I already said yarn tarot. So yeah, that's everything. Little brat, I'm going to do it. I'm going to spin the a wheel for you. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Oh my gosh, no! No! Game over. I can't even like fudge and say, oh, it's on the line. It's not, unfortunately. Little Brad, I'm so sorry that the wheel was a jerk to you, but the good news, as you know, means that you can play again on Wednesday. So thank you so much for being a subscriber. We absolutely love you. We adore you. You're one of our very most favorite people. I'm looking for a button and I don't have it anymore. I used to have a little heart button. I'll have to so get some confetti instead. Wheel, you need to get out of here because I'm mad at you right now. See you later, alligator. Get out of here. We'll be back with the wheel in about half an hour, so just keep that in mind. Once again, if you haven't hit that subscribe button, now is a great time to do it. Okay, back to our quick tutorial. Mean, mean wheel for sure. Okay, so you've got your rows, right? You've, you've, you've finished this up and you realize oh, this last row is totally wrong. I did not mean to do this. Or you realize, oh, I need to take this out because my border needs to be shorter because I don't have any more yarn that my grandmother who passed made this blanket, blah, 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 blah. All you have to do to frog this is legitimately just take this piece of yarn right here and pull on it. It's just like knitting. Okay, so you get to the, you get to where you need to be, right? You're at the very end of your row. And if you're trying to pull out just one row, don't go past that. You this this is the end of the row right here. Trust that, okay? So don't go further down like that. I mean, I, that this is technically where you want to be. It's right here. So I had a chain one stitch there. There should be a chain one stitch or chain two usually. So just pull those out and you should be fine. But you want to have a whole row down here on the bottom, wherever it is you're stopping. Now the, her other question was. How do I finish the project? In knitting, you have to bind off, right? Like there's this whole thing. With crochet, all you have to do is cut your freaking yarn and pull that loop through. Like this is so easy that it's a little dumb. There, look at that. It's not going anywhere. And then she wanted to do, know what to do with her, um, with her actual yarn because her her grandmother, I think, just did knot bind, binding, so you know, where she knots it with another piece of yarn and then cuts it really close, which I am not a fan of, but to each their own. So I don't have a lot to work with here, but if this is my front side, if this is my front side, right, then I'm going to go on the back side with a tapestry needle and I'm just going to come through the back side of these loops. And you're just going to weave these ends in wherever you can find a place to weave them in. Try to keep it in the same color that you are using. So hers is blue. So you'll want to keep it in that blue section. Don't pull too tight on these because you don't want things to pucker. And I would, I mean, for me, crochet is a little harder to weave my ends in with than knitting is personally, just because knitting, I can see the stitches. They're pretty perfect. I know exactly where things need to go. This is just kind of a catch all for me. I'm like, wherever it wants to go is where it's going to go. Um, if you're working with a unprocessed wool, it's much easier because it's going to felt against, against itself and be sticky. Acrylic is actually sticky sometimes. Like this acrylic is pretty sticky. So that works really well too. Um, clearly it's not going to look this bulky because you have more rows than what I have on this. But there, that's probably far enough for that one. So you would just take it at that point, cut off the excess, and then I like to kind of just pull on it, make sure it's not going anywhere. And then she won't have this. This has already been woven in, but you would do the same thing with your other end if you have it. And that's how you would weave that end in. So hopefully this was helpful. <laughs> I'll go back over this and watch it later. Let her know where in the video it is. Hopefully it helps her. If she has any questions, she can reach out to me. And that's kind of how that works, you guys. I can't always do that. And usually it happens on Wednesdays. But if you ever have a question regarding crochet or knitting, it does not matter how silly you think it is or how um beginner it is or advance um if we have time i will absolutely go over it with you if i have to wait till the next show because i don't have the means to do it at that time then it'll happen at the next show as long as you remind me beforehand um, but we really want to help you guys learn how to do those things so if you 
I didn't know how to do any of that, which I, I we have a lot of crocheters in here, so I don't know if that's the case. Um, then there's that. If you did, fantastic. So you just noticed my bowl with the D&D &D design in the corner. You love it. This is actually, um, it's a dice tray. So I got this dice tray to play D&D &D with. And then I always, <laughs> I have it out for Blinky, right? I swear to God, <laughs> that's a 20. I'm going to be so mad. And I always forget to take it to the game with me. But this is really cool. It unsnaps. So it lays flat like this. And then the backside has like this dragony scale stuff on it. Um, so I can put it in my D&D &D books and take it with me and then when i get there i can just pop it together and it's so funny because i remember when i first i've been playing DD &D for most of my life i started when i was seven and we never had dice trays but then all we ever had were like you know really basic cheap dice you didn't have big dice you didn't have fancy resin dice you didn't have the stone dice or the gemstone dice and that's really what these are for at this point is to kind of save your table and also make sure you don't chip up your dice but i like them they're cool they're a lot of fun to use it means your dice don't fling around everywhere so highly recommend 10 out of 10. well i was going to show off some beautiful <laughs> crab bag yarn but i guess that's not necessary at this point because we're sold out so if you feel bummed out that you missed out on those grab bags i am so sorry seriously that if I had more grab bags, we'd throw them out there, but it's only what we have on uh, hand, right? So to make sure you don't miss it next time, when we tell you there's going to be grab bags, definitely, even if it's just for that one month, sign up as a patron over at patreon.com slash boss kitty. You can do the same thing with box sets, which we'll be doing the Doctor Who box set in May, um, because really it does make all the difference, as you can see. So, okay, let's actually get to our sweater, kiddos. <laughs> You love it. You're learning, trying to learn how to be a DM. <gasps> Roxanne, I love DM. You know what? Can I give you some advice? Can I give you some unrequested advice like a total dick? <laughs> Just be like, here, take my advice. You can say no. That's why I'm asking in advance. You don't want advice. I 100% I will not give it to you. I don't want to be that person. You used... Uh, used to use your great grandma's ashtray as a dice tray. Oh, that is fantastic. I am in love with that. Like, way to upcycle right there. Thank you, Miriam. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, here's my advice to you, my dear don't take things too seriously. We're not going to knit today. We're going to talk about everything, but um, there's a little bit of advice here. Number one, you have to be flexible. You have an idea for a story in your head or you're doing a pre-created story and that is great. And the players really appreciate appreciate what you're doing for them. However, they're gonna go off script. There's absolutely no way they're not. Like it is impossible for them to know what's in your mind or what's in that book unless they've read it, in which case they're dirty cheaters and get them out of there. They're gonna go off script. And you just kind of have to roll with it, you know? If, if they go into a town and you tell them that the person who's running the bar, this really happened, is evil, they might burn the bar down and you have to roll with it, you know? Maybe there's consequences to that. Maybe that means that that lawful good paladin who was like, that's against the law that you were to have follow them around is not gonna follow them around now. If they go out in the woods and, you know, the town that they're supposed to go to is to the right and they go to the left, they don't know that. If you want to switch that up, make the town to the left or to the right instead or to the left instead, rather. Like, just whatever you need to do, but roll with it because that's the whole point. You're, you're, you're not creating a story just by yourself. You are collaborating with other people. They just, they don't know the things that you know. So that's, that would be my biggest advice is, is not to not to stress too much over the details and whether or not they go off script because they're going to and just roll with whatever it is because ultimately most of the time if you have a good group the story that you all tell together is almost always better than the story that was pre-created or that you have in your mind so, there you go that is my advice and don't prep too much like prep a fair amount make sure you've prepped but if you over prep <laughs> then when they skip that bad guy that you wanted them to go check out, you're going to be really resentful of it. <laughs> if he's got a, like a whole backstory and every toward path and all this stuff, and they're like, hey, we're not going down that route. Like, you're going to be like, you mofos, what is wrong with you? Because you'll take it personally. You you have to. I mean, you're a creative person. That's just how it works. Uh, 
Ashes add character. Oh my gosh, that's so good. Hey, T. Lambert, how are you? They will always do what you don't expect. So, Wisdom Queen ran a game for me years and years and years and years and years ago for me and her partner and our friend. And we played, all played chaotic neutral characters because we're jerks. <laughs> and she tried so very hard to stick to, to the script, right? And she did a great job. Like, it was a very fun game. At one point, though, she also be, I'll, we'll get there in a second. She, um, she had somebody drop some sleeping droughts, basically, right? Like, you know, where you put the poison in and it falls, makes people fall asleep. And I found it and I asked how many doses there were. And here was her mistake. She should have been stingy. She should have told me there was like two or three, maybe tops. She goes, I don't know, a hundred or so. I'm like, oh, okay. We get to this tower that she set up and you, the goal ultimately was for us to, you know, like infiltrate the tower, maybe get through the guards down at the bottom, make our way up to the top of the spire. And there's a big bad there that we're supposed to have a confrontation with, but you know, we got to get through all this other stuff first. So, so we find some guards. We, we do the whole entire uh, Wizard of Oz thing, you know, where you knock them out and you put their clothes, their uniforms on and you infiltrate the tower. We pretended we were guards. We snuck into... <laughs> We stuck, snuck into the kitchen. I put all of the sleeping potion into the soup that was being served for dinner. And we knocked out a hundred guards and then proceeded to kill them all while they were passed out because we're chaotic neutral and it was just easier than letting them wake up. And basically walked upstairs to confront the big bad that we had to confront. She was so mad. Like really, really mad. I felt really bad about it. But you know, lesson learned, right? Like I said, they're always going to go off script. <laughs> yeah, anytime, Roxanne. You always try to avoid flavor on random things because they can go off tangent. Exactly. Then you have other DMs, like my current DM, who um, that the group I game with, I've been gaming with for 10 plus years, on and off at different times, and it's by far my favorite group to game with. Um, and our DM is amazing. His world is his whole, whole entire... He's created his world over God knows how many years. And he has... Like, so much lore for everything. So it doesn't matter if we go off script. Off script is on script. That's how involved it is. It's just, and because it's this huge world that we've been playing in for, for you know, multiple years, different characters become heroes and history in it. It's, it's a whole thing. It's great. Right? It was brutal. I felt really bad afterwards. You destroyed her plans. <laughs> no worries, JK. I love my greasy lurkers. Have me hearing Matt Mercer mention at the end of campaign two saying that he was in talks with one actor to play an NPC in a certain setting, but the players never went. Exactly. Happens all the time. Right? You're like, oh, this is gonna be so cool. And it's so funny because you're while well, you're when you're running it, you're like, I'm making this too obvious. I'm making this too obvious. And then they just never go that way. And you're like, clearly I did not make this obvious enough. So so yeah, I mean if you want to invest all that time into it, go for it. As long as you understand that they're, they're, they're not likely to always fall into every single thing you've created. But if you invest a ton of time like that, it's really cool when they do take a random left turn and there's still crazy, amazing um, lore infested waters for them to tread through. Like that's just great. It is Rosie. I love those long-term multi-campaign world. It's it's the best, Miss Monster. It really is. Like, and you, you always get really excited when you hear about your old characters, or there's like items, artifacts that come up from your old characters, stuff like that. How can someone get into D and don't know anyone that plays. It seems like it has be it has to be. Oh no, it does not have to be in person. <laughs> Literally greasing my little greasy lurker pants. I love it. So Matt. Um, there's a time when I would have said, yes, it does have to be in person. But COVID changed all of that. Ta-da! Um, no, it does not have to be in person. You can play via Zoom. A lot of people do Zoom. A lot of people um, will use other digital services. Um, we use, if we're, if my group is gaming remotely, and we do from time to time, we we'll use Zoom for um, voice, and then we'll use Roll20 for our maps and things like that. Don't worry. And then you just use, like, if you're doing D&D, you can use D&D Beyond. If you're doing other games, Roll20 and other um, systems actually have it set up so that they 
have access you have access to those character sheets a lot of the time it's really helpful um, and what that's done is it's opened the door for a lot of people to find groups that aren't necessarily in their in their neck of the woods right you can game with people who are across the country from you or in a different country entirely or you know maybe in a different state whatever it is um, the hardest part about that is obviously finding a time that works for everybody because you know it might be midnight when it's three o'clock in the afternoon for you you run a virtual ending so you want to play you should join one of these forums to find groups but new people are scary coco i am part of a really good one on facebook that i'll send you later um it's probably the most healthy and supportive d i'm not even called dnd ttrpg group that i've ever been a part of the books are expensive and you don't have people to play it now yeah, that is definitely a problem is the spendiness of books. Um, there are systems out there that books are fairly inexpensive or where you don't need to buy a bazillion books. Um, Powered by the Apocalypse does a ton of different systems. Well, they are the system, but there are a ton of different games based off their system. And you really just need the book for that game. And they're usually pretty inexpensive. I think the Monster Hearts book is an example, which... It's very high drama and very high RP, and it's just over the top ridiculousness. I think it costs like thirty dollars for the books for the book, and that's a hard copy. You can get the PDF for less. You pop into your sister's campaign as a surprise monster here and there without telling them. That is fantastic. I love it. The power of Zoom, <laughs> power of the internet for sure. You guys, look, I've got this hot mess again. Ugh, so irritating. You play with a Canadian, a person from Tennessee, and one from Maine, one from Ohio. Op, that is so magical. Ugh. So the group I play with, um, I didn't play with for a really long time because I met them through an ex of mine, and they are related to him, and then also his best friend. And, uh... I like to say that he got the gaming group and the divorce. We weren't actually married. Um, and then right before COVID, they messaged me and they're like, hey, such and such is being a jerk. We don't really hang out with them anyway. And we would like to know if you want to come game with us again, because we miss you. And I was like, it's been 10 years, but yes, that sounds like a fantastic idea. Yes, please. It was very funny. So this is a little messed up. We're going to have to kind of I don't know how to coax it through the rest of this, I suspect, um, just because, I don't know, somewhere along the line, I got things a little uneven, so we'll have to figure that out. It'll even itself out eventually, but right now it's just a pain in my butt, but we can work with that. That's fine. <laughs> you have player, the player's handbook, monster manual, and the DM guidebook, and you only played once, and it was forced by the DM, and you totally lost. Oh. Goth, that breaks my heart. I'm so sorry. My very first game, I was seven years old. My dad and my mom, my dad was at the DM. Uh, he put together a game for all the kids in the family. So me and my brother, who was like maybe six. So, no, maybe Joe didn't play because he was six. I don't remember. But I played, my cousins both played, who were older than me. And then my eldest cousin, she played with my family anyway. Um, and they put together this this one shot for us, basically. We died like three or four times, and then like this cleric showed up out of nowhere to heal us. Um, I don't think that my cousins, the two had never, who had never played before, were really into it. But I was like hardcore, fell in love with this thing. I didn't really get to play again until, you know, I was a teenager. But still, I, I was I was obsessed at that point. Never looked back. Best roommate works graveyard shift, and in addition to our localish group, he can also play with a group that includes people in the UK and Europe because the time zones work from that's perfect. Pain in the kitty's butt. Exactly. Exactly. So nobody you guys didn't tell me what amazing thing out of your um comfort zone did you do to treat yourself this weekend? That was your homework. You were supposed to do something for yourself. Even if it felt like it was outside of your comfort zone. Just something good. I want to hear all about it. Oh, and update on the house. Because you all know that we are in the process of attempting to buy a house. <laughs> 
Can I just say that buying a house is the most traumatic thing I've ever gone through in my life? And I'm sure that there are people who have been through much more traumatic things, and I shouldn't say that. So I'm sorry for you, you guys out there. That doesn't make this any less traumatic or exhausting for me, though. I don't wish the actual process of buying a house on anybody. Um, we did the inspections last week. We did a normal inspection. We did a sewer line inspection. And we did a radon inspection. And the normal inspection was great, but the sewer line has to be replaced and the radon test levels came a little higher than they should be. Um, and if you are unaware of what the hell I'm talking about, because I was, it's, I don't really exactly understand what radon is other than it causes lung cancer, but I think it just comes out of the ground and you can get a mitigation system that, that um, kind of neutralizes it, right? Um, and they're not super expensive, but they're not cheap either. Um, so we're in the process of trying to get the seller to repair said sewer line and put a mitigation system in for the radon. We're like, anything else, we're fine with all the, all this shit in the house. That's, that's fine. We'll just, we'll take care of that. Just take care of these, please. Making your first sweater wearable crop. Oh my gosh, that's fantastic craft. You were absent when this homework was assigned. Can you get an extension? Yes, rat, you can. Buying a house is super stressful. I f oh, thank you, Roxanne. You bought some new yarn because you're upset that your friend the bride went and kicked you out of her wedding. That's not much of a friend. In your closet, hidden away in a trash bag. <laughs> Cassandra, good on you for buying yourself some yarn. I am so sorry your friend did that to you. That is a shitty, shitty move. You should wear the heck out of that bridal shawl for yourself. You're learning to sequence Christmas lights to music. Rashana, that sounds so cool. Coco, Yes, BK. Buying a house is te uh, tedious. I'm glad our realtor was great and did so much. Same Z's. Uh, you got iced coffee, Brittany. That's amazing. That, I love iced coffee and I haven't had it in a long time. Uh, that was the new thing you did. You're not a coffee drinker at all. It was meh. You weren't a fan of it. That's okay. It's not for everybody, but you know what? You tried it and that, that's important. I am obsessed with coffee. You get high anxiety with a lot of people. So going to Vegas full of people made you very uncomfortable. I can understand that. I really want, I've never been to Vegas. I really want to go because I love people watching. I like to make up stories about people as they walk around. <laughs> Not mean stories, just really interesting stories about people I don't know. <laughs> you bawled your eyes out for two days because you had two days of no sleep. Oh, you know what? That is cathartic though. Crying, don't ever stop yourself from crying. Like it's, it's good for you. It's good for you emotionally. I think it's actually probably good for you physically too, but I'm not a doctor, so don't quote me on that one. Can't imagine that it's not though. You've spent the past week looking after a sick hubby. He got a cold, but now you're... Oh, Trina, I'm so sorry. I hope he takes care of you then when he's better. His monster, you went to the yarn store and ran into some knitting friends that you haven't seen in a while. Did you get to see Karen? I love her so much. Oh, by the way, speaking of yarn stores, we have a trunk show at Wild Knits in Salem in April, I believe, for local yarn shop day. I know that's still far a ways away, but if you're going to be in the neighborhood, you can always swing by and say hi. Look, I made it rhyme. Okay, so here's the culprit right here. This is difficult because it, there's two strands of yarn coming from the same thing of yarn that it makes it almost impossible to untangle. You kind of just have to go with it. And it's very frustrating, like really, really frustrating sometimes. Ugh, it sticks on itself. There we go. That's better. It's just dumb. I'm not a fan. I don't know what it's getting caught up on, but it's getting caught up hard on something see if that fixes it okay let's keep trucking yarn barf all the time cat jensen you had your aunt and cousin over for company oh my gosh that sounds like fun <laughs> to F F facebook and i said my name was called yet again but the wheel was a bully i want a divorce tk told me that i can divorce him by just standing in a parking lot full of much people and saying, I divorce you, I divorce you, I divorce you three times. So, little brat, that might work with the wheel. I don't know. I don't know if you have to sign paperwork. You might need to get an attorney. I, I have no idea. You work at a vape, vape shop and you had to work open to close on Sunday during the Super Bowl. 10 out of 10, 
do not recommend. Oh, I bet you had a ton of people coming in talking about the Super Bowl. We did not watch the Super Bowl. We had people over to play games, though, and it was a lot of fun. Um, I got to see Catastrophe. I don't think she's in here right now. And she made pickled grapes, you guys, and they... Pickled grapes are the most delicious thing I've ever had in my life. That's all I'm going to say about it. They're so good. You have to go. Have to put the kiddos with chaos and going to work on your hat. You have a great night too, Lambert. We'll talk to you on Wednesday, I hope. Thank you for being have a good night. Do you have to click your heels three times while saying it? You do not, Cocoa Pie. You have to spin around in a circle and go, I divorce you. And then you spin around in a circle again and you go, I divorce you. And then you do it one more time and you go, I divorce you. Sorry, it was really loud. And then you spit on the ground three times, stomp, and walk away. I don't know if you have to do all those things, but I've added them for a dramatic flair. You didn't get to do anything since you were baking gluten-free brownies, cupcakes, and chocolate mochi cake bites for your son's school's Valentine's Day tomorrow. Oh my gosh, tomorrow is Valentine's Day. Hot damn. I forgot. Seriously, I totally forgot that tomorrow is Valentine's Day. Um, well, happy Tuesday to all of you. And you know what? If you don't have anybody to hang out with on Tuesday, that's fine. Hang out with yourself. You are the best day ever. So I'm just saying. Uh, everybody else will be very, very jealous of you. I divorced you, Wheel. <laughs> You only watched the Super Bowl for less than 30 seconds when you walked past the sports bar in your neighborhood on your way home, Allison. I love it. That's great. I I don't hate football. I am not a fan of a lot of politics in football. I know they've gotten better as of late, but still. Um, but I used to I used to not like football at all, and then I was a Seahawks fan, and I'm not not a Seahawks fan, but I did throw a Super Bowl party one year. TK made me like this 90-inch screen because we had a projector it was amazing we had everybody over to watch it on the projector and it was it was Seahawks and it was the one where they missed that last call it was so bad and they lost I made everything blue and green everything my cupcakes everything and I'm sitting on the floor next to TK watching this last play and it happens and I start crying <laughs> like honest to god real tears I was not pretending I was in tears I was so mad my friends <laughs> they just got up they're like well, we're gonna leave they pat me on the back and they left <laughs> Tiki's like it's gonna be okay and I'm like no it's not <laughs> I was very 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 passionate about that game <laughs> never again <laughs> Uh, Patreon. Uh, unfortunately, they're sold out, but I it was a Patreon exclusive. That is true. So, Michaela, they have sold out, unfortunately. Um, as you guys know, we offered the um, grab bags to our Patreon, our patrons, 48 hours in advance. Um, if there had been anything left over, we would have offered everything else to everybody else on Wednesday when the show started. But they sold out in less than 20 minutes. Uh, it's kind of mind-boggling, honestly. I guess I snooze. That's okay, though, Michaela. There's always next time. Trust me. Trust me. There will be a next time. Um, generally, <laughs> when I'm dying up yarn. So the funds from the grab bags will be going towards me restocking the store, in case anybody's wondering when they'll see that ectoplasm. It's coming. Um, but normally what happens is when I'm making box sets or something like that, or if I'm trying out create a new color that is when you will see grab bags happen because it inevitably you're gonna fail and not fail but you're gonna you know not quite get what you want or make a mistake whatever it is and those those are what go into the grab bags do, 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 do. what a mess what a mess okay so I can kind of see what's going on here it's not happy at all honestly um, hmm, hmm, hmm. just kind of untangle. Hey, look at that. That was helpful. Sort of, kind of, maybe a little bit. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I think it was helpful. It looks like maybe it was kind of helpful. Oh, you guys, guess what? It is 716. That means, in case you're wondering, it's 
time for the second round of Wheel of Goodies and goof em ups I was late to the game there. Okay, let's stick it out there. Hockey definitely reigns supreme in my house. My mother is a huge hockey fan. She will get belligerent. She will get louder, louder. She will swear a lot, like a lot, a lot. Never, I've never. It's she like transforms into a different person. Um, I've never really watched hockey, honestly. It just it's very aggressive. It kind of makes me a little stressed out. Uh, Yarn Pirate cannot win. Oh my gosh, Nightbot. You're going to have to let go of this obsession with Yarn Pirate that you have. It's kind of embarrassing. You don't get American football. I don't think a lot of people do. <laughs> Why? Every time, every time it picks Yarn Pirate, it picks her twice in a row. Sneaky, sneaky bot. It's so funny. Miss Monster. Are you on my list? I don't think you are. Let's double check though. You're not. Congratulations. You are our next contestant in the Wheel of Goodies and goof em ups This is so exciting. Congratulations. Only had to get through your own pirate twice. Ba, 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 ba. There we go. You guys know what this wheel has on it. I'm not going over it again. It's got some really colorful stuff on there. Okay, Miss Monster, I'm going to spin. We're going to see what's going to happen. It's going to be so good. What the ever-loving F is going on with you tonight? Seriously. Not a fan, Wheel. Game over. Don't like it. I like giving things away. I don't like taking things away. Miss Monster, I'm so sorry. It does mean that you're eligible to play again on Wednesday, so keep that in mind. Um, yeah, and thank you so much for being a subscriber. We really appreciate it. Okay, Wheel, get out of here. I'm so mad at you right now. Goodbye. Yeah, yeah, whatever. So, I don't think she's necessarily in here right now, but I am just going to give a shout out to Wisdom Queen. It is Wisdom Queen's birthday today. Um, I don't know if she'll watch this later, but just in case she does, Wisdom Queen, we love you. You've been around since the very beginning. Happy birthday to you. There we go. Okay, let's go ahead and move into our next segment, my loves. It's time to stretch. Okay, we're gonna stretch it out. I've been super tense for obvious reasons. So let's just kind of relax for a moment. You know, there are different breathing techniques you can do. I don't know all of them. I know the one where you can breathe in for like two seconds and then release for like six seconds. Is it four seconds or six seconds? There's a box one that you can do, but I'm just gonna do breathe in to release for four. So breathe in through your nose, breathe out through your mouth. I apologize because I have a microphone on. We'll do this like four times. So you just go. Yeah, like that. So in for two seconds out for four. Okay, your body should feel a little more relaxed. So we're gonna go ahead and bring one arm forward. Hello, bring it across. And you're just gonna hold it there in place. You're definitely going to be here next week on Friday for sure. Awesome. Box breathing is my new best friend. Box breathing, I don't quite remember how to do it. But when I did do it, I was like, oh, that's really good. Any type of breathing, it doesn't matter what it is. If I'm thinking about my breathing, my heart rate goes down. My body relaxes. I, even if it's just breathing in and breathing out. TK has the same thing. If you think, of, I think most people do. If you think about your breath, you take deeper breaths, which is great. You breathe properly from the diaphragm, all that bullshit. Um, but... It just calms you down because you're focused on something. Maybe the wheel might be nice to you then. You wouldn't count on it. Oh, little brat. Wheels mean that most people. 
in the before times, you and Wisdom Queen were going to do a soda stream. Do you think you will ever get to try and revise the idea? Poco so is actually going to be me and uh, my friend David Lamp. Well, David, um, who is a friend of TK's as well. He was going to come out and do a soda stream with us. I don't know if he's going to. But TK and I have still talked about this, like having so having like patrons choose the sodas as an example, and then having you do a blind taste test to those. So we might do the soda stream. I don't know if it would be Patreon um, exclusive content or if it would be for everybody. I, we've talked about it though, for sure. That We wanna do more of that kind of stuff for you guys. Just so, you know, it's kind of like the dad joke vibe where not everything is necessarily fiber arts related, but that's the main vein of everything. And then you get this random weird shit off to the side. Okay, so go ahead and just roll your shoulders a little bit. I'm gonna roll mine backwards for a few moments. You thought it was seven, four, eight. Breathe in while counting to seven. Hold it and count to four. Let out while counting to eight. That's what they do for you. That's great. No, that's fantastic. Like you said, there are so many different, and I'm going forward now. There are so many different breathing techniques and they're all used for very different things. But at the end of the day, they're all going to bring your heart rate down because you're focusing on your breathing. And that just kind of soothes you a little bit it's one of those tricks right like if you have high anxiety or something and you're feeling yourself panicking they tell you to touch things find something to touch and then just really focus on the texture of what you're touching the temperature of what you're touching how squishy or hard it is like everything you can think about what you're touching because you're focusing on that thing and so it's going to calm you down because you're not thinking about the things that are stressing you out Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and do our wrists because those we always do the same wrist thing because it's just really important and really good for my particular hands. So I like to bring my hand out, take my other hand, pull on those fingers. Today is not the day of working on the fossil frenzy. You should walk away from it for sure. You messed up half of the color. No. And you should feel this right through here, which is lovely. <laughs> Worry stones as a necklace or bracelet are amazing to help. Yeah, absolutely. It's another one of those things where you're just focused on touching something cool and smooth. It's so interesting. The things that have been used in the past, you know, before you had really a science to it, that the reason they work is because science, right? Like, I'm just fascinated with things like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the tops of our hands now. So bring your hand forward, flop it down. And then press the other one on. Oh, that popped actually. Just press down gently on the top of your hand. Don't smack on it. Don't hurt your wrist. TK sprang his ankle this weekend, by the way. Uh, I thought he broke it. He's like, it's not broken. It's not broken. But we went to the hospital. It's not broken. He was right. I bet for sure. Little brat, my best friend in high school, he may weighed maybe, maybe 110 pounds on his heaviest day he's like six feet tall and he was double jointed everywhere and so we went to the um there's a kind of carnival that comes through um portland every year called the rose festival and they do a waterfront um carnival type thing and with a bunch of rides the fun center if you will and we um we went one year i think we were juniors or seniors and we got on this ride that would go straight up and then turns upside down and spins and then you sit there just sitting there and the safety seat belts were not straps they were the pieces that came down like this right and then they 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 they, they kept you in well because he was so thin he wasn't really kept in there very well and it's one person per seat and so we get up there and it starts to spin us and he's holding on for dear life and then it turns upside down and it sits there for a second and it's putting pressure on his shoulders and so they automatically popped out of place because he's double jointed everywhere and he folds in half and starts sliding through the middle of this this thing and he's sliding out of it about to drop down god knows how many feet and i'm sitting here like this like no nah! we kept him in they got him down in time it was very scary and we got on the ground and he's like let's do that again i was like no never never ever is that ever happening again we're never ever going through that again. No, it's terrifying. Today on Travel Oregon with me, right? Exactly, the Rose Festival. That's a big deal around here, the Rose Festival. 
we have ships that come in, we have different parades, we I have so many things. You use box breathing a lot in uh, meditation. It's amazing. Yes. Oh, he had a blast. He thought it was great. He has always such a little shit about it, too. Like, not just that, but, like, you remember, you know those those uh, school chairs that you have where it's the chair and the table together? He used to fold his, like, so he would sit crisscross applesauce, get in the chair. He would fold himself in half so that he was literally just sandwiched in between the chair and the desk with his with his little crisscross applesauce legs right here and his and his head and torso here. And he would lay his head on his knees and he would go to sleep in class. We were assholes. Complete assholes. <laughs> okay, go ahead and just shake out your arms and your fingers. Hopefully you should feel a little looser, a little more relaxed until I told those terrifying stories. Let's get back to it. It's almost your Z100 Jam and Salmon story. Tell me about jam and your Jam and Salmon story. Jam and Salmon, by the way, if you are not from around here, was the mascot for Z100 in Oregon. <laughs> Maybe the fossil beds in John. Yeah. You're going to start picking things every stream for you to talk about in Oregon. There's going to be a lot of stuff that I don't know, actually, or I haven't been to those places, JK. You would be amazed. As an example, I've never actually been to John Day. Wait, no, I have. We passed through it, and we did not go to the fossil beds. I was like, wait, no, I actually have been there. Tell me your Jam and Salmon story. His friend Chaz worked weekends at Z100. Because they used to work at radio stations together. Speak loudly. <laughs> so Chaz, called Chaz called him and invites him. To a Z100 event and Timberline Lodge, which is like a ski place. That's where they filmed The Shining. Yeah, go on. I get there and he tells me he's going to be the new mascot for Z100. He gets to Timberline and his friend Chaz tells him he's going to be the new mascot for Z100. So, the so they have the salmon costume and it's made out of like hard pink, I assume, foam. Yeah, it's not flexible. Not flexible at all. And they put Chaz in this outfit. They put Chaz in the outfit. Dance it around, hands out flyers and things with his fins. No, he doesn't. Oh, God. And then they tell him to get on the ski chairlift, go at the top of the hill in this foam costume that you can't bend in. And I know where this is going. So halfway up, it looks like this giant salmon is giving birth to his friend Chaz right off of the chairlift because Chaz is sliding out of the chairlift because there's no way to keep him up. They had to bring up an emergency crew and have him jump into a net, apparently. That is... Why do you have to one-up my stories? Why do you have to... Why do you have to one-up my stories? Be gone! That's terrifying. Uh, maybe that could be Patreon content, Oregon Travel Stories. Ooh, I like that idea. I like that idea a lot. Your friend used to date uh, Carney, and he told us the most scary things about carnival rides. You still won't ride them. Brittany, I don't blame you. Seriously, nobody should really get on carnival rides, and yet we do. Oh, what is wrong with us? You're laughing. And I know, isn't that nuts? <laughs> you don't do high fairgrounds or theme parks. You're scared of heights. That is an understandable fear, honestly. Um, I am not afraid of heights. I probably should be. Um, I think I'm right here. I think this is the middle section. There we go. Get a mic, TK. Right? I'm like, just get a mic. <laughs> uh, there you go. There's TK's story told through me. I wish that he would just stand behind me and talk and he could put his hands in my armpits, right? And sit here and go like this. But he doesn't. He, he, he won't. Poop. Poop, I say. Poop. Ooh, that poop hurt. Ow. <laughs> you guys would be so proud of me. I've already had dinner tonight. I made potatoes, baked potatoes. I had them at the other night at uh, during game at my friend's house, actually, and they were so delicious. I was like, I'm going to make loaded potatoes at home. And they were delicious. You were a DJ. Put on a mic so we can hear you. <laughs> The crowd has spoken, TK. You need a mic. 
1,001 subscribers, TK comes back as the unseen co-host. We're currently sitting at 59, holy shit, 59 patrons. If we get 60 patrons before the start of the show on Wednesday, so one extra patron, then everybody gets drawn from the wheel. We'll get whatever the wheel comes up. Plus the blinky roll. What does that have to do with you, though? They want to hear you. <laughs> He's not even watching the show. That's very funny. Are you and Megan the a Megan the Stallion fan? I don't know a lot about her other than She-Hulk. So from She-Hulk, yes. <laughs> but I will be damned before getting on a Ferris wheel. He used to have one. Your toes curled in fear. Hey, TK, I have I have a goal for patrons if they hit. Okay, so 60 before Wednesday. I think that's a good one. So if we can get one more person before Wednesday, then we love goofums, uh, goodies and goof-em-ups. No matter what you uh, get on the wheel, you'll get whatever you get on the wheel, game over, pattern, whatever. And you'll get a blinky roll. If you get a hit blinky roll, you'll get two blinky rolls. So it's like rolling with advantage. Uh, so just keep that in mind. We just need one more patron for that. <laughs> You're confused. What he was saying is that we are at 59 patrons. If we hit 60 before Wednesday, so one extra patron. Oh my gosh, I set it down on a 20. Then everybody who wins the Wheel of Goodies and Goof'em Ups on Wednesday's show will not only get whatever they win off the wheel, but they'll get an extra blinky roll as well. You might win yarn. Um, so that's that. I think, TK, you can veto this if you'd like, but my recommendation is, is that when we hit 75 patrons, we will hand out some haikus for our patrons. Haikus by TK. You'll just have to record a few. You can veto it, though. If you don't want to do it, totally veto it. <laughs> I loved She-Hulk, too. It was so good. We both did. We thought it was wonderful. Last time you went to a carnival ride was 10 years ago in the Dutchess County Fair. The pendulum ride, which I always love, got me disoriented. I did not like them after that. i <laughs> give you a second while you make your mother a Patreon account. <laughs> I love it. That's great. Your mom's like, what is, what is this? <laughs> you know, it's really funny. My mother is no longer our Patreon, which is our patron, which is fine. But she gets so funny about it because I'm like, you know, this that we dropped this thing. She's like, I want to see it. And I'm like, sign up. She's like, but I'm your mother. And I'm like, yeah, I know. Sign up. I'm terrible. I'm the worst daughter ever. Sure thing to the haikus. Also, TK will do craft hole on a regular schedule through the summer if we can hit 1K subs before the end of March. Hot damn, that one is huge. You guys, that's that's actually a really big deal. He was only going to give you guys one craft hole, I believe, but he will do a weekly craft hole throughout the summer months. That's three months of craft hole. You get an extra show each each week from us, basically. Uh, if we can hit a thousand subs before the end of March, that's a decent amount of time too. You made your sister a subscriber. I love it, Casey. Thank you. <laughs> Crochet. There's never a good night to to count stitches, honestly. <laughs> I'm going to take it as a compliment. It means that we're uh, we're amusing at the very least. Yeah, this is a hot mess. This is a hot mess of sadness right here. We're going to make this work, though. I don't know how, but we're going to make it work. <laughs> I love you, but sign up. Right? Exactly. My brother is a, a patron, so I think, like, the 50 Nifty thing, I think she saw it through my brother's Patreon, which that's fine. But I'm not going to just... I'm not going to give you all the goods... That's called favoritism. I can't do that. We do have a little bit of a knot here. It's not really going to matter much, but I do need to at least loosen it. But because of because this isn't just one uh, strand of yarn we're using, we're using both ends, it makes it really hard to try to unknot things. We're going to try to figure it out, though. I have faith in myself. Sort of. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, 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 okay. I see something going on here. So if I take this, maybe... Maybe if we go like this. Yeah, yeah, that did, that did something. And that. It's a start. It's a start. To more knots. But, you know, I'll take what I can get. 
Do you guys know that this fiber art show is actually brought to you by Knots? <laughs> it. You know what's really funny about it that the that this yarn is what's getting knotted up is that this is my yarn that is inspired by Not the Brave. <laughs> you better go get your boyfriend to subscribe. Yeah, do it. Rishana, absolutely. You guys get on that. Thank you for being a friend. Share the show. To, this is this is the year of sharing. Sharing is caring. Knots, knots, and nuts. Ooh, that looks like that released some stuff. That was good. That's good. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Let's see what we got out of that. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. Look, I actually have yarn that's not knotted up right there. Okay, we can continue. I didn't totally didn't realize how hard it was to knit fingering weight um, that is pretty much black. Oh my gosh, Matt, yeah. Black yarn is evil. It's terrible. I love it. It's gorgeous. It's wonderful. Use it. But make sure you have like an ot light or something. Don't do it in a dim room. Make sure it's brightly lit because black yarn is a fucking nightmare to work with. You, It's so hard to see your stitches. It's so hard to see if you've made a mistake. Oh, and fingering weight black yarn for sure but totally worth it once you get through it <laughs> thumbs up the show too yeah absolutely make sure you hit that like button you guys because that does a lot of the work for you um if we have the more likes we have the more likely it is to be in somebody else's feed and maybe they'll subscribe to the show not maybe they will subscribe to the show you want to know why because i'm amazing tk is pretty damn funny and you guys are magic on crack Did we hit it? We have officially hit 60 patrons. That means on Wednesday show, my loves, everybody who gets a uh, wheel of goodies and goof em ups automatically wins a free blinky roll. Doesn't matter what you get on the wheel, you'll get that too, but you also get a free winky, blinky, winky, blinky roll. Now, with that being said, I will say this. The free blinky roll, if you roll blinky or if you spin blinky on the wheel, that means that your blinky roll works like an advantage. You get to roll it twice and take the higher roll. It does not mean that you get to roll twice and if you get two 20s, you get two skeins of yarn. I'm just going to put that out there. It's basically rolling with advantage in that case. But everybody at least gets one blinky roll. So keep that in mind. Thank you so much. You guys are the absolute bestest. You work Wednesday. No. We'll do it again at some point in time, Goth. I promise. You have a magnifying glass with a ring light to work with black yarn. Oh, that is brilliant. Your neck lamp has saved your eyes with working with the black yarn. Wonderful. You have astigmatism, so black yarn is okay for you, which, however, is a pain. White is, however, a pain. All of you. Yeah, totally. All of you. Anybody who wins on the wheel of goodies and goof em ups. That's what I meant to say. Sorry, 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 sorry. If you are the winner of the Wheel of Goodies and Goofing Ups, you get whatever's on the wheel and you also get a blinky roll. That's how that should be worded. Um, so it's still three people. It's just that you're guaranteed to win. You, even if it says game over on the wheel, you're guaranteed at least to be able to roll blinky, which is huge. So make sure blinky's got some good, good uh, die vibes going on through it. Fingers crossed, Nightbot picks you. You might try to find someone that wants to trade it. Oh, that's not a bad idea. You had the brilliant idea to try to make a new thing that you've never tried without looking up instructions of any kind. It's a secret. You put a pick and show and tell. Oh, I cannot wait to see it. Crochet, yes, I love, I love things that people are like, I'm just going to do this on the fly and see how it goes. And some, most of the time, it looks so cool. Like, it's the best. I'm all for that. You guys have four whole minutes until our final round of the Wheel of Goodies and Goof em Ups. So make sure you've hit the subscribe button. I'm curious, what are we at for subscribers? I have to actually go there and look instead of just looking at our chat. One moment, please. We are at 919 subscribers, you guys. We're like 81 away from 1,000 subscribers. I think we can do 81 subscribers by the end of March. I think that that's totally doable. So let's make this happen. <laughs> You're sending all the good dice, Juju. Thank you. 
Whenever I get the idea to knit with black, I leave it to a fate roll. Emily, that's how TK and I first went on our one of our first dates. We walked around downtown uh, Portland to watch. There's a zombie beer crawl. And like I said, I like to people watch. So we went to go watch people dressed as zombies get drunk and go from bar to bar, but we missed it. So we're roaming around. He's like, which way do you want to go? And I am very indecisive. I don't like making choices, but I always carry dice in my bag. Go figure. So I pulled out a six-sided die, and I went... Was, no, a four-sider. Was it one, two, three? Yeah, it was a four-sider. I said one left, two forward, three right, four backwards. And we rolled a D4 all the way through downtown Portland. He's like, you have dice in your bag? I was like, yes. Why? You never know when you will need to game. <laughs> At the time, I think he found that really attractive. I think he regrets it now. <laughs> you have a love-hate relationship with black yarn. Exactly, Roshana, right? Like, it's gorgeous. It's so good looking when it's done. But, oh my god, is it a pain in the ass to work with. More Oregon with BK. Forever and ever. You can't help it. You bought with black of, of different shades. That's why we have soot. Because I really like black yarn. But... I can't work with it. And so it's such a dark, dark, dark gray color, right? It's not black, but it's pretty dark. So you can still see what you're knitting, but you still get that nice, deep, luxurious, like, shadow yarn. Your husband and I plan all of our dates on D20s. <gasps> Emily, that's so good. Yeah, you have to always be prepared. You never know when somebody's going to be like, hey, want a game? You're like, yeah, of course I do. I was born to game. That's a little dramatic, but still. I don't carry a full set on me anymore. Well, I don't really go to a lot. No, I don't really carry a full set on me anymore. I should, though. My purse isn't big enough for it. I should probably count how many rows I did, I've done. I'm only supposed to do 10 with just the buttons and bravery. And then I'm supposed to move on to another color. So, we'll check that here in a second. I don't think I'm at 10 rows yet, though. Whoopsies. Goes in there. But you know what we are at? Oh my god, we're so close. It's 744. We have one whole minute, you guys. That's it. Just one minute. Which is perfect, because I just finished this round. So, it looks like that was the pickup row right there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've done seven rows. I need three more before I switch over to um, part of the Henson and Oz and part of the uh, Buttons and Bravery. You have to rip a whole back a whole row of stitches because you miscounted. Okay, for little brat, what are you making? How many extra or or um, how many extra stitches or not quite enough stitches are you at? Can you fudge it and like bring a stitch up or drop a stitch down? That's my question for you. Usually rock, paper, scissors for deciding stuff. Crafty like a monkey has a lot of adorable D&D stamp stitch markers. <gasps> I'm going to have to check them out, Cassandra. Thank you. Got the email. I've picked up learning how to solve a Rubik's Cube. I can solve, uh, solve up to the second level of a 3x3 three three so far. That is so cool. I look at a Rubik's Cube and my brain breaks. You got a set of mini dice for your purse and crochet hooks. Yes! Oh my gosh, that's so cool. It's time, you guys. Okay, and we're going to wheel of goodies and goof them up this up, and maybe the wheel will not be a giant flaming bag of poo today. We're going to find out. My hopes are high and optimistic. I think. I think we can get at least one win tonight. I mean, you're all winners in my book. Don't get me wrong. Roshana, congratulations. You're our final contestant on the Wheel of Goodies and goof -em ups Let's get that wheel up. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Okay, here's the wheel. We know what's on it. We know the wheel is really into game over tonight. Since there's only two game over slots, maybe the wheel's done with that. Yeah, wheel? Roshana, I, I am optimistic that you're going to win something great. Okay. It's a $5 Ravelry pattern. Congratulations. Congratulations, you're a winner. 
yeah that's fantastic Rashana. it's super super simple all you need to do is message me in discord with the pattern that you want off Ravelry please make sure it's five dollars or less American dollars and what your Ravelry username is so I can gift it to you thank you so much for being a subscriber we really appreciate it and congratulations again wheel thank you for ending the night on a high note goodbye goodbye okay so clearly we're gonna go into our patreon thanks obviously we have some extra people to add on here so keep that in mind but thank you to our patrons new and old you guys are a large piece of our backbone i don't want to say the full backbone but you are you're you're a good chunk of that backbone um, and we wouldn't be where we are today without you so thank you so much and if you are interested in being a patron you get things like grab bags which sold out like that tonight you get early access to those early access to box sets you get cool extra content like me singing like an idiot maybe tk with haikus which is going to happen here sooner rather than later at some point uh, when we hit 100 patrons which is getting there honestly um we're going to release a patron exclusive colorway it will be whatever patrons want it to be because they get to vote um and it will always be available to patrons it will never not be available but only to them um, so yeah, we're always adding new stuff. We've got um, the Fleece to Fiber project that's coming up. So keep that in mind. Patreon.com slash Boss Kitty. Thank you again. You all are amazing. Okay, so let's get into Discord. I actually did not update Chantel, so I really hope TK did. He did. He's the bestest. Time to clean up. There's a cat sitting in your working yard. I mean, that's pretty standard. Yay! Okay, here we are, show and tell for tonight. First this week from Emma. Uh, fir the first is the first week of dog sweater hell, and second is your daughter's swan colt having a baby. <laughs> okay, these dog sweaters are so cute, and I am beyond impressed that you've made so many in just one week. So does this happen every year where you have like a mad dash from people where they order dog dog sweaters from you and like you're just like whipping them out that's really impressive i love show and tell too rashana you have a plan for this patron colorway already a cardigan <gasps> emily it's gonna be so good oh thank you tina thank you to our bk staff yes absolutely our uh, moderators are top notch and we love them so damn much okay here's the swan cult i think this is <laughs> absolutely fantastic i hope that your daughter calls it a swan colt because that would make my heart so happy i also really want to know what they're discussing because i'm terrified crochet mom the first pick is a cardigan that i'm making for my brother the next is a secret project for my husband don't say it all okay i won't no pattern oh i see okay cool cool cool, cool. i won't say anything else we won't talk about it though so here's the cardigan for your brother I love it. I love the browns and the blue ones, the blue colors. They look really good together. Your brother's going to love this. And then here's that other project that is for um, your friend with all of the cool stuff going on that I'm going to be vague about, but tell you that I really, really, really like the colors. Uh, <laughs> Seriously, I do. Rashana, the first picture is my new Agris, I can't say it, Ag Agristuco? Oh shit, man. I should know what that word is and I don't. Agristuco, dress that is reversible. The second is my Skeksis Torque and my Skeksis Mystic Bracelet from Crafty Kilts. This is really, really, really cool and clearly I do not know the artist, but it's amazing. It's adorable and I love that it's um, reversible. <laughs> she called it a cult i love it and then here's your skexies jewelry oh my gosh this is gorgeous i'm so jealous right now i need these so bad and i can't buy jewelry or anything else right now everything's going into a stupid home <sighs> okay elizabeth finished my son's blanket using three strands at the same time only shades of red green and black it is so heavy it is so beautiful though though so it works so well together i love the fade into the different reds how you have that red and like it just changes because of the green and the black in there it's gorgeous you think i'll like that cartoon 
just thank you i appreciate it right thank you very much yeah it's this is beautiful and i love that it's got a little bit of a wave to it skittles kid the valentine's day sweater that i finished this weekend didn't follow a pattern the book blind date that i finally get to open oh can't wait to look at it i you need to make a pattern for this because this is great i'm really loving the runs in it i think that's wonderful i love the stripes i love the different types of yarn you use because it all looks like it goes really well together you have to take a picture of yourself wearing this and show it to us on wednesday i want to see what it looks like on because it's so beautiful good job and this this is the blind uh, book blind date that you finally get to open oh it's a blind i get it this book is part of a series but each one is also a standalone book you don't need to read the books in order so it's a blind date book that is a really clever idea that's brilliant and you should post a link in discord somewhere because i want to know all about this this is really cool crochet queen first my progress on the Le poof cardigan using three skeins from the toil and trouble box set zim zabber and zim come we fly and maximum results they're all in the middle second Baby hat I made for my neighbors who just had a baby. It's a Coco Bear hat. Third, Nori and I wearing matching, uh, and me wearing matching sweaters. This looks so good. I love it. I love it. I love it. I also love that you stuck with the, um, the length. I made mine a little longer and I wish I hadn't. It's beautiful crochet queen. Seriously, they look really good together. And I love this color on the end too. It's a super sexy color, your rib color. Mm. The hat is super cute. Um, I'm all for hats that have ears on them, clearly. Your stitches look divine. And, oh my god. <laughs> Why are you and Nori so damn adorable? <laughs> Cat kills me every time. He's so cute. Uh, that sweater is really, really cute. Um, did you get it from a unique vintage? Because I've been eyeballing a sweater that's on there for a while now. Obviously, though, I'm not buying anything right now. <laughs> uh, you guys look really cute together. I, I am living for this picture. I like that you guys also kind of have the same look on your face. <laughs> In a good way. Goth Hi, Alexandria. How are you? Welcome to the show. Thank you for being a Goth Emo Raver. What my partner got me for Valentine's Day versus what I got him. The chocolates are flipping delicious. I was supposed to get flowers too, but there was a mix up, uh, up so as compensation, the company sending another basket of chocolates. What do I mean drowning in chocolates? There's worse things to drown in. Holy shit, are there worse things to drown in? Those look delicious. I need chocolate now. Oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> it looks really, really good. And then look, this is the cutest though. I think he got, I think he got some good stuff though too. I know it's not as fancy, but it's so cute. That dragon is too much. I always get TK plants for Valentine's Day. And they're like these little shoddy plants that are supposed to die and somehow he keeps them alive and they're huge. <laughs> like this is what happens every year. So it's just become a running gag at this point. Your favorite yarn bowl op. It's bigger on the inside. Oh, I love it. That's so good. Oh, it's true too. That's great. And then we've got, it doesn't say what it is, but I'm going to guess that this is your, is it a scarf? It's a work in progress. I don't know, but I really am digging the um, texture on it. You've got like almost, I know it's crochet, so it's not really a rib stitch, but you've got this where you're crocheting through the back loop, I think, or the front loop. I'm not sure what the back loop would have to be the back loop where it's creating this ridge. I think that's really neat. It gives it a great texture. <laughs> Right? All the all the chocolate. <laughs> Machibi, birthday gift completed yesterday. Gifted today. Recipient loved it. Took one day and Gracie was stuck by my side the entire day. Oh my god, it's gorgeous. Congratulations on finishing it. I'm glad the recipient loved it. Look at this kid. It matches your cat. I feel like it should have been made for your cat. It's so beautiful. I love it when you guys put your um, tags on your stuff. It just makes it look so professional. It's great. Part of being a sock knitter, Miss Monster says, is being a sock mender. I need to learn how to mend shit. Reinforcing the heel area on soles of my hand knit socks. The blue and yellow socks were finished in October of 2017. The red multicolor were finished July of 2015. These are beautiful. And I, I really like mended socks. There's something about it. It kind of tells a story. So I always think that's really neat. I know people who will hold um, 
sewing thread with their yarn to reinforce the toe and the heel on their socks as well. I don't know if that actually works, but I know people who do it. Yeah, I just, it's so neat. And I love when the, the mending is not in the same color because it's just, it adds so much to, to your piece. Yarn pirate, this is eventually supposed to turn into a cow. I can see the cow. Is that the face? The little nose right here. So cute. This cow better have the biggest, most adorable eyes ever or I will never forgive you. I'm kidding. Not kidding. <laughs> it's really cute. <laughs> JK Knits. Orion snuggled up in the heated blanket with you. Smart kitty. <laughs> Your fade cardigan just after the sleeve split. And to continue knitting woes, here's my now frogged and turned water, bo water bottle, cozy bottle, water bottle, cozy cat socks. Oh no. <laughs> oh kitty, I just want to scritch the heck out of you. Uh, your fade is looking great, seriously. So that's plus right there. I'm very sorry that this is what has happened to your kitty cat socks, but I will tell you that this is really freaking adorable. And like, if you get like a, a big old water bottle, you can stick it on there and it'll be great. I say as I drink water. Coco, just Charlie chilling. This picture is for TK because if TK could steal Charlie, he would. The cow will be super cute. Oh, you too, Bobby. Thank you, Marie. You have another one that says exterminate. That's so great. I have one that says uh, crafty bitch on it. <laughs> Sock was almost done and you couldn't make it over your foot. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, you guys. What a great show and tell. Wonderful way to end our Monday night. If you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, what are you waiting for? The cl Once we get to those thousand, you guys get some craft hole from TK, which is exciting. Also, as subscribers, you are eligible for the subscriber giveaway each month. It's always a $30 gift card, unless we have box sets available, and then it's a box set. No joke. That will happen in May. Um, so keep that in mind. You just have to be a subscriber in the month of, right now, February, and you have to comment on one of the VODs from this month that we've dropped in February. You can comment on all of them, but we're going to pick finalists from each one, so just keep that in mind as well. We absolutely adore you guys. You're so talented and wonderful. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your Monday night and or Mon Tuesday morning, depending on where you are. And have a great Tuesday. Um, cross your fingers for us on the house buying <laughs> escapades. And I'll cross my fingers that whatever it is that you're wishing to have happen or have go smoothly works for you guys. I can't wait to see what you work on in the next few days. I know time does fly a little brat. It's really crazy. Keep in mind, if you're here on Wednesday and you're a subscriber and you happen to be one of our um, contestants for the Wheel of Goodies and Goof em Ups, you also will get a free blinky roll no matter what you get off the wheel. So it be here, seriously. We might actually give away some free yarn that night. Um, we're here on Mondays and Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. Pacific time. We'll see you guys on Wednesday night. Until then, as always, my loves, happy crafting. Good night. Yeah!